Mm, I, I know we're not so. sort of going into this too much in terms of the topics right now, but I don't know if any of you guys actually saw the exclusive, the IGN exclusive for Anthem the other day. They released the first sort of meaty gameplay chunk. It was it was a good sort of mm. ten minutes of didn't, didn't see it. Was it any showing good? it off? And let me tell you, now, um, it's <laughs> Mass Effect with Destiny. It's it couldn't be more similar to and if you don't like Destiny, then you're not going to like Anthem. It's as simple as that. This is what it was rumoured to be from the start as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Everything is screams a a Destiny and and Mass Effect hybrid. It's... You you look at the enemy's health bars, shields, the way that you buff and debuff things, it's all the sort of things that you love from Mass Effect or know from Mass Effect Mm -hmm. put into an exploration space which you could easily confuse for Destiny if the game wasn't set in third person. So... Yeah, I did also see. I don't know if it was from the IGN gameplay. Or, did they have like the first reveal or something? Is that what it was? The first reveal of some gameplay. Maybe that's what it was. But uh, I did see a lot of people, like industry, you know, people that are in the know, being concerned about the game. You know, in terms of um, <laughs> maybe it's not as good as we think it's going to be. You know, what I mean, like some people, some industry insiders that have you know seen a lot of the game and stuff hands on. We're a little bit concerned about, you know, the longevity of the game and the state the game is going to be when it launches. So that'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I, I think mean, they could honestly, be completely wrong, but you've just I sort of know. set it up perfectly for me. When it launches, they've actually mm. advertised things like public events, which yeah. is destiny, and they've advertised you, you know, not to sort of be able to nail the quest from exactly what it is to what it finishes, but it, in that ten minutes, you actually get to see it. And yeah. it's essentially what we already have in a different game. And uh, don't get me wrong, it looks okay. It looks like it would be quite fun for a while. Mm-hmm. But it, it seems to me that it's going to be a bog-standard experience that's going to grow old and pretty quickly. It's It will fall if it's, as they've released the first 10 minutes, well, not the first 10 minutes, but a 10-minute snippet, you'd think they'd show off all the great ideas they've had. And what they've basically shown is 10 minutes of what Destiny would look like if it was Mass Effect. And that, I don't think, is going to enthuse too many people. The last three minutes or so of the video is a duo, like a fire team or whatever they're going to call it with the javelins. They're shooting this bullet sponge boss, and the boss is doing the same attacks repeatedly. There's no variety in it. And you just think... This is not what they needed to do. This just this is a miss. Like this, if they go down that route, and that's what they're going to show off of being. Oh, hey, look! This is the exclusive first look. What's well, the rest of the game going to be like? Well, I've got a question for you, Perks. Um, just because you know, Destiny. We know which way that game's gone. We've covered it. You know, like it feels like for a million, a million hours, times. Yeah, on this podcast. And when that game came out, me, you. And so I played it extensively. Yeah. What we ended up doing after the first week was killing ourselves by jumping off a cliff, respawning, running full pelt into a load of mob of enemies, shooting them, and then looking for legendary engrams on the floor. And if we didn't get any legendary engrams, jumping off a cliff and repeating that while I was listening to Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley on repeat like 5,000 times. That yeah, is my endearing memory. Yeah, that is my endearing memory of Destiny. And I was just sitting there and I almost just <laughs> put the controller down and looked at my own hands like, what am I doing with my life? And <laughs> just turned the game off because I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> Do you see Anthem going down the same route as that after like two weeks? I think it's going to be exactly that. And I've I've said on this podcast before, you know, if you don't like X, you're not going to like Y or Z because these games are all the same at heart. And whilst they come with different skins and different environments and, you know, different terminology for the things that they do, the good and the evil is part of them and the quests and public events, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, basically. I, I can't remember which reviewer it was that got the, the hands-on on for the IGN exclusive, but they actually said in, in the short time they had, they found themselves repeating the same quest to get different loot. And you just thought, that's one of the major problems that people had with The Division. It's one of the main problems that people have with Destiny is that you're doing the same thing repeatedly on the hope that you get something different at the end of it. 
it, it's the same. They've already released that it's the same. And I just think the warning signs have to be so clear for anyone that's expecting anything different. Yeah, I, I know what you're trying to say there. I think, I suppose I'll, I'll try and play devil's advocate a little bit with it. I think we have to be careful. They've only shown 10 minutes of game. I mean, we've seen gameplay at E3 before that, but they, you know, this first look wasn't sort of two hours of gameplay. It was 10 minutes. So... We How worried be... are you, though, that in 10 minutes they've shown repetition? You think if they're uh, yeah, going uh, to show off 10 minutes, they have to sell that game to people. This yeah, is the first, um, this is the world exclusive first 10 minutes chunk that they've shown. Maybe, you know, and it's maybe, repetitive. You know, maybe not the best first 10 minutes to show, but, you know, that, uh, well, I mean, we've, we've got to take them at face value in what they say. And they've said, haven't they, that it's going to be a rich narrative experience. So I'm going to take them at face value. And when I buy the game, if it's not a rich narrative experience, then you can say they've sold us, you know, they sold us a lie because that is what they clearly said. That, that was their, you know, thing that they tried to say was the thing that was different from sort of the division of Destiny was this was going to be a Mass Effect type, you know, space opera story, but with the Destiny MMO elements, which I think that's what most people wanted from the game, if I'm not mistaken. I mean... Yeah, but right. they also said Mass Effect um, Andromeda was going to be a AAA game. We all know that ended up at the <laughs> start. Well, I mean, we differ on that, don't we? Because, well, I think us three actually quite enjoyed Mass Effect Andromeda, but it was clearly a departure from the first three. But Yeah, it had its problems. Got, I think the game I got... Liked I think it, it got... Yeah, actually, I actually think it got a lot of The animation of people's faces critics. looked like they were still in alpha testing. Uh, I don't yeah, have, the graphics I were, were, were subpar. I didn't actually that. experience that many um, glitches or animation bugs, really, mm. to be honest. I, I think I might have got lucky, but my well, game yeah, was quite smoothly. You on that. Yeah, the same thing happened to me, but I don't, you know, we should freely admit that we, we saw them all sort yeah. of not first hand. Oh, yeah, third hand yeah. I mean, we saw how bad they were. Mm -hmm, definitely. But, I mean, coming back to your point there, said in terms of, you know, this is what we wanted from Anthem, right? Richer narrative experiences, but also the, the good things from previous uh, shared world shooters. My, my question to you would be this, right? If Anthem delivers a triple A sort of nine to 9.5 out of 10 narrative experience, but between sort of points A to B to C and how the story progresses, you've got to do 75 to 100 hours of grinding the same thing repeatedly to be able to get there. How do you feel about that? Would that be, a, well, would that be something that interests you? Or is that like hey, we don't really care about what your story is because to get from point A to B is is just not fun. Well, I think the first thing I'd say about that is that Destiny 2, I didn't think Destiny 2's story was amazing, but it definitely, you know, it was, it was a coherent story. Um, and it managed to do that in a way where you didn't, you had to grind a little bit, of course, but it managed to do it in a way where what, what would you say the length of Destiny story was? 10 hours? 15 hours? Something like that? In terms maybe of the grinding more, to maybe get 20 there, hours. no, I think probably less. I think... Yeah, pro, pro, I would say long. less because I'm a hardcore player and I understand yeah. how to progress quickly. So yeah. I'd say probably about 8 hours, maybe well, less. That was, well, that was a nice encompassing story and you didn't... I think... I don't think too many people moaned about not being able to get to the end of the story, did they? In, uh, in Destiny 2, you know, without having to grind too much. I think you had to grind a little bit, but I don't remember struggling really, to get to the end of the game with having to grind. So I think that's the first thing to point out is that if, you know, that's what they should be trying to achieve, a solid, maybe a little bit longer, they can say 25 to, as long as it's not, as long as it's not like 100 hours to complete the story, which would be totally ridiculous, I think. But um, if it's a good 25, 30, 35 hour experience where, yeah, you have to do a bit of grind and you expect that in these shared world shooters. But the thing for me is, you know, you're looking at Anthem perks, obviously, as you'd be wanting this to play this game for three months, six months, 12 months. For me, I just want a good game for a month, two months. So we're probably looking at this from different angles. Because if the story is really good to me, that's the main thing to me. You know, if the game down the line, two months down, has no content, and I'm not really as bothered. Because for me, it's more of a short termish game where I'm, you know, I'm not looking, I, I, I can't see myself playing Anthem in two years' time, for example, whereas, you know, if you if you really love the game, Perts, and it was incredible and better than Destiny, you maybe would play the game in two years' time. I think that's the difference, I'd say, as well.